An army of sheep led by a lion will beat an army of lions led by a sheep. <laughs> well, that's a yeah. So let's be very honest about this thing and, and really understand that you need to understand where you lie and where you fall. So yeah. it's very important for us to understand that uh, leadership has to be definitive. You can't be less afraid. It has to be definitive. You have to be strong. Just like a lion. You know when a lion uh, meets an elephant or a buffalo or whatever, the buffalo and all these animals run away. And yet, by the way, they are stronger than the lion. They are heavier than the lion. They are more intelligent than the lion. They are taller than the lion. They run away. The lion, because of its attitude, it sees lunch. That is a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tony Trapp, thank you very much for coming to the CEO bench. And I want to ask you, so if you were elected the president of the Republic of Uganda today, what would be your first state of nation address? Now, as you look into the camera and close the show, I think my first CEO. my first state of the nation address would first of all to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just close it there. <laughs>
did they make a difference? So it's useless for you to make so much money and the money does not add value to people's lives. Wow. So for me, yes, you have to have a vision and at the end of the day, you are serving people. It, it doesn't change. Leadership is leadership, whether it is at uh, what we would call a lower level or a top level. Leadership is leadership. Uh, um, um, it's about influence. It's that, that influence that comes from you have a vision and you are serving people. So, um, um, what changes is the level of responsibility, but the other one that people don't like is the level of accountability. <laughs> you see, uh, Jesus said, uh, you know, to whom much is given, much will be required. So, the only difference is there is the level of responsibility. When you're at the national level, you are now responsible for an entire nation. Uh, when you are a, a, a CEO, uh, now you're no longer just looking at the department, you are looking at the entire entity. The responsibility has changed, the accountability even goes higher. Hi, this is Julius Wotlonio, pastor at Watero Church. Thank you so much for tuning into House of Talent Television. It's a great innovative way of doing TV and particularly for being a part of the CEO bench talking about leadership. You know what friends, leadership can be tough, leadership can be lonely and the dynamics of leadership keep changing. I want to encourage you, watch the CEO bench so that you can get to hear real practical tips on leadership from people who are actually practicing leadership. Once again, thank you for being a part of the CEO bench right here on House of Talent Television. An army of sheep led by a lion will beat an army of lions led by a sheep. <laughs> That's a fake. Yeah. So let's be very honest about this thing and, and really understand that you need to understand where you lie and where you fall. So yeah. it's very important for us to understand that uh, leadership has to be definitive. You can't be less afraid. It has to be definitive. You have to be strong. Just like a lion. You know when a lion uh, meets an elephant or a buffalo or whatever. The buffalo and all these animals run away. And yet, by the way, they are stronger than the lion. They are heavier than the lion. They are more intelligent than the lion. They are taller than the lion. They run away. The lion, because of its attitude, it sees lunch. That is a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tony Trout, thank you very much for coming to the CEO bench. And I want to ask you, so if you were elected the president of the Republic of Uganda today, what would be your first state of nation address? Now, as you look into the camera and close the show, I think my first CEO. my first state of the nation address would first of all to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just close it down. <laughs>
In today's world today, where things are changing quite rapidly, life is turning around quite fast all across the world. Coronavirus has come with so much that turn around the table, and uh, before we know it, life has changed. But rapidly changing world, learning to lead our organization and to read the turbulences that comes with it is quite key. This is the CEO bench. And of course, my guest on the CEO bench this week and this particular morning or afternoon or night, depending on which part of the world you are in, needs no introduction. From the secret places of Orient in the West Nile Bank of Uganda to the modern masters of fashion and design as far as dressing people who are serious or not in the world is concerned, is Santa and Zoe. Santa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Eddie. How are you today? I'm great. <laughs> and how have you been? Ah, well, I will say, uh, you know, cooking, <laughs> gardening, yes. loving my baby girl, and just spending time with my parents. I am blessed to still have them, both okay. of them. Yeah. And so, yeah, just been enjoying home. We're under the lockdown. Wow. <laughs> That's a blessing right there. Santa, you are on the CEO bench today, and I want to just dive straight to our interview. Um, this program brings people like you who are already, you know, riding to the top, already on the top, or, and people were coming back from the top when they're retiring. But particularly in your case, you are a lady on a move right now. Absolutely. And you have a lot of fire going on right now. Yes. We want to start by first knowing who is Santa. And of course, uh, who is Santa and Zoe in a nutshell? I'm just a very happy individual, yeah. you know, with a very flourishing, beautiful spirit. Okay. That's me. And if I am to look for you when I have not known, which part of this country do you come from? First of all, are you Ugandan? If yes, <laughs> what are the values that remind you? I get that Ugandan, a yes. lot. Yes. I get to places that are either Nigerian yes. or African American, yes. <laughs> but I'm actually yeah. very much uh, Ugandan. Yeah. I am from, I am Madi from West Nile. Okay. That's just a few, you know, my parents' home is a few. Uh, kilometers from the Sudan, okay. southern Sudan, but I am born in Kampala, okay. so I am born, bred, groomed, developed wow. in Kampala, Uganda, and actually right here, this is Kanjoja Street. Bukoto Street. Bukoto Street, yes. I was born on Kanjoja Street, <laughs> right behind. Just the right, the street above. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in my hood. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right, so we're going to take this moment to welcome all you guys all across the world to the CEO bench. And of course, it's been a while. It's been a, a moment where we had to go into a lockdown pre prepared, unprepared uh, for it. But it is what it is that coronavirus brought to us. And of course, the CEO bench has been on that uh, small lockdown, but we're back. And uh, Santa, growing up, we want to know from you, did you ever want to, what did you ever want to be in life? Uh, okay, I always wanted to make my daddy very proud okay. in whatever it is that, you know, I was going to do. But, uh, you know, I knew that I was going to be in the creative industries yes. anyway. Yeah. Be it fashion, that made itself out. Be it singing, because I did a lot of rapping in school. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> yes, as a rap star. If, okay. If, if, if there's anyone from uh, Botiki yes. College, College Wairaka yes. College, Jinja, yeah. Jiko, you know, yeah, I did a lot of rapping. Okay. And then um, I have a gold medal in, in art, acting, okay. so in stage. So I did a, a, a bit of acting right before I branched into modeling. And modeling then was it for me. So yeah. I always knew that I was going to be in the creative Space. sector, okay. yes. Yes, but what inspired my fashion and modeling yeah. journey are uh, two things. My mom always had a machine, ma you know, making dresses, yeah. similar dresses for her girls that would wear on sandals, wow. all floral, all below the knee. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes, yeah. I also was blessed to have my dad bring for us the sound of music, mm -hmm. 
video when we were little and when I watched that I fell in love with Maria, the lead actress, yes. and I, I, I would sing all her beautiful songs and I would do her little, <laughs> you know, round turns yes, yes. and walls a bit, but I didn't I did not touch the glory of the divine in the singing. I touched it when I was on the catwalk. The first day I did the catwalk, yeah. I captured. Wow. And I knew that that was my call. Wow, yes. wow. So, thanks to Daddy and Mommy, first of all, for the machine being home and making dresses from home. Yes. Uh, I, I, I think we, any African growing child then and now, would very much relate with your story because mothers used to make these things from home for their daughters and it was such a big thing. It was, and it's very important that yeah. we do it yeah. today as well because you see our parents came from an era of the British or the colonial yeah. rule. Yeah. Though, so, you know, schooling was wholesome yeah. and so mommy's teachers were, I believe, Scottish, British yeah. Yeah. and they taught her these things. And for her to be a complete woman, yeah. she had to do her math, pass it, do her English, do all her subjects. But at the same time, they teach, they, they taught them to stitch proper clothing, yeah. hands, and also with machine. Yeah. And then they also taught to cook and bake. Wow. So all those uh, skills that are life skills yeah. that I think that our children today need to be taught. Wow. Yes. Which is something we are not quite doing very well in, in, in this era. But Santa, did you ever see yourself becoming who you are today as a, you know, did you ever see yourself, did you ever, any at one moment? I am privileged to be born of a very successful father. I saw success from the time I was in Kanjocha Street. I always knew that I was going to be in the lane that I had seen my father in. I saw the cars that he rode in. They were very prestigious government cars. Yes. He worked for the government. He was very successful. Then he joined politics. You know, he's, he's, he's now retired and, you know, he'll be chairman of a university here. He'll be all those things, but he's, a, you know, very instrumental in community. I, I, I wanted that for me. I did not see myself as doing what my mommy did, yes. which are beautiful things that made me who I am. Yeah. But I saw myself more in the line of my daddy. And I always knew that I was going to walk that walk. Okay. And so when I, <laughs> yeah, in a <laughs> nutshell, I, I, I knew yeah. that this was the walk I was yeah. going to walk. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Well, we're having a, an interview with Santa Anzo, who is the CEO of uh, Uganda International, founder and the CEO of uh, Uganda International Fashion Week. No, founder and president. Founder and president, actually, yes, of Uganda International Fashion Week, as well as the, the founder and the MD and the chief designer of uh, Ara Papa by Santa Anzo. I'm sure you've interacted with Ara Papa very much wherever you are and to all of you guys from the us and the uk and australia and of course the guys in denmark and sweden well santa Zoe is here and of course the people here at home and of course guys in nairobi we're gonna have a good ride with santa you know and talking about change management leadership and transformation santa leadership is uh the core value of this tv program that you're on right now and we look at it from a very um, interesting part. One, self-leadership. And uh, first of all, before we get into the self-leadership, we want to know from you, to you, Santanzo, what is your definition of leadership? You know, leadership is uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be mentorship. You know, just taking charge of a group or a segment or an industry or a nation, whatever it is, you are in a leadership or you're in a, a position that guides, yeah. yes, that guides a vision, a mission, goals. Wow. Yes. And uh, on that note and with that definition on leadership, are you a leader? 
Uh, yes, I've always been a leader. Okay. Uh, uh, and I think that parents need to be keen to see this about their children. My yeah. mommy didn't see it, I think. I was just, <laughs> a, I was just this problem yes, and yes, gezi yes, gezi yes. happening yes. to her all yes. the time. Yeah. But uh, I, in, in, uh, as, as little as, you know, probably primary, I was always having bull regiments doing things. You know, I would lead them in a game, I would lead them in a play, I would lead them in tapo, I would lead them around William Street where I grew up as a, a little girl, you know. And then I move into school. Primary, I was mostly in a, a girl guide and, uh, um, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in the drama and dance class. I wasn't a leader there. But in secondary, my leadership skills came to the top. I was always a prefect. Uh, uh, my first role was a prefect of furniture, as in charge of the <laughs> inventory uh, yes, yes. in my school. And then after that, I was the women affairs <laughs> wow. minister. Wow. And then I was also, you know, always vice chairperson of, uh, you know, the social groups in school. Yeah. I was an eagle. My social group was an eagle. Yeah. So I was the vice chair there. And, uh, you know, all through. So um, I, and it's not by accident that when I started modeling, there was a vacuum. There was no leadership. There were no of a, a professional management agencies for models at that time. And I had this burning desire to be on stage and, and, and walk it. So I found myself again assembling, putting together all the interested girls and boys who were mostly my age yeah, then, yeah. and get them onto the, you know, onto the catwalk and then seek out you know sponsorships uh seek out partnerships with uh you know uh, the hotels with uh corporate companies to see to it that our activities would be funded so in so doing yeah. i was just chasing a dream but actually i was being a leader yeah. and then there's there's no telling that immediately after fashion uh fashion was formed as a career yeah. Uh, right after modeling and also there was a vacuum in fashion and because of the Uganda International Fashion Week and <coughs> the goals and ideals that I was pushing forth, yeah. I found myself rising up okay. and so guys like yourselves, <laughs> sir, yes, yes, yes. and uh, everybody else yeah. then would yeah. be calling me yeah. in response, you know, to respond or yeah. to advise. Yeah on matters, yeah. fashion, yeah. Mat matters, entrepreneurship, yeah. matters, modeling. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I am a leader. Wow. Thank you. Let's talk about self-leadership. Your story is quite very fascinating from where you're coming, uh, you know, from. Um, a lot of people don't know where to start from and when to start. And uh, this particular program, the CEO Bench, looks quite very deeply into self-leadership. If you were to define self-leadership, given your story, what would be the definition? And in a scale of 1 to 10, what would you say has been your leadership journey? Self-leadership. I think it's been very uh, progressive. Mm -hmm. It's still a journey for me. Mm -hmm. I am telling you that I am functioning at 6% as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I haven't even gotten to my 20% yes, yes, and yes. yet I have to hit 100%, yes, yes. you know. Uh, so um, it's been very progressive. I have a very long way to go. Yeah. I am open to unlearning and learning and I'm doing a lot of that. Uh, but I will say that self-leadership has no definition for as well, for as long as you are not self-aware. Mm -hmm. It starts with getting to know who you really are. Mm -hmm. There has to be a need or a, a deep need within oneself mm -hmm. to identify who they are. And the only way one can do that is, excuse me for preaching, is mm -hmm. but you have to be tap, tagged and in sync with the creator yeah. we didn't create ourselves yeah. and even as amazing as you may think that i am yeah. i can assure you that i wouldn't be sitting here if i didn't say prayer this morning yeah. and so you need to be tapped 
into your source, who is your creator, that is where you delve deep into your inner man. Yeah. Your inner man is where God lives. Yeah. He tells you who you are. He tells you who you are. He tells you your dreams and aspirations and actually guides you on that path. Yeah. And so for me, it starts with a journey of self awareness, self knowledge, accepting yourself, and then getting to know your values. Yeah. And then trying, much as we fail, we must remain honest to our journey yeah. and our values, and then living by them. That is, for me, the beginning and end of self leadership. Wow. Well, you have got the best definition so far for leadership, self-leadership. And of course, in summary, Santa is saying you need to define who you are, you need to find who you have, find self, give self meaning, and continuously put self on the path that leads self to a meaningful journey. But doing that, you must have a spirit in you that continue to guide you to the next step. If you veer off from that spirit or from that path, then there is a possibility that you will not be able to realize who you are and what value you stand for. Stay right there. We're going for a break. And when we come back, Santa will be taking us through a little bit more about leadership journey as Santa and Zoe from, uh, you know, Uganda International Fashion Week through to Warapapa. And of course, you know, the journey of going to the world. How do you lead yourself? How do you start? How do you move? What do you do? What are the journeys? What are the things, the do's and don'ts? Stay right there. We'll be right back after the break. This is the CEO Bench. An army of sheep led by a lion will beat an army of lions led by a sheep. <laughs> That's a pay. Yeah. So let's be very honest about this thing and, and really understand that you need to understand where you lie and where you fall. So yeah. it's very important for us to understand that uh, leadership has to be definitive. You can't be less afraid. It has to be definitive. You have to be strong. Just like a lion. You know when a lion uh, meets an elephant or a buffalo or whatever. The buffalo and all these animals run away. And yet, by the way, they are stronger than the lion. They are heavier than the lion. They are more intelligent than the lion. They are taller than the lion. They run away. The lion, because of its attitude, it sees lunch. That is a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tony Trout, thank you very much for coming to the CEO bench. And I want to ask you, so if you were elected the president of the Republic of Uganda today, what would be your first state of nation address? Now, as you look into the camera and close the show, I think my first my first tell of the nation address would first of all to <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just close it down. <laughs> struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed technology has come in they've moved on yes we're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child on to tiktok has surpassed what's yap mm -hmm. the other one i call uh, I, I never call it facebook it's book face <laughs> why are you on book face <laughs> dad it's facebook yes Me, I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes.
Welcome back from that break. This is a CEO bench. My name is Eddie Okila and my guest this morning or this afternoon or night, depending on which part of the world you are watching this program from, is Santa Anzo. Santa, welcome back. Thank you, Eddie. The Uganda International Fashion Week founder and president, as well as the um, chief designer and the MD of Alapapa by Santa Anzo. Over the years, I've been interacting with so many people across the world. And you started from the confinement of your mother's sitting room, <laughs> as you have uh, encountered, I mean, stated, and moved to a different place, and now we're in a different place. That journey has got a lot to do with what leadership is in life. Leadership is about finding the path, leading self, giving self meaning, and moving forward. And along the way, you will have so many people that join you. If you are good to inspire them, they will come. If you are good to encourage them, they will join you on the journey. If you are good to, you know, transform their lives and they feel the transformation, they will join you. Let's talk about the leadership journey of Uganda International Fashion Week to start with. Mm. And the <coughs> foray into Arapapa. Oh, okay. So, first of all, it's not Arab, Ara Papa yes. or Ara Papa. You it's know, that's, that's how very. How do you pronounce it? It's Ara Papa. It's Ara, Ara Papa. Papa. Yeah, Ara Papa. It wow. means butterfly in wow. my mother tongue in Madi. Wow. Yeah. But uh, in a local Ugandan dialect. Yes. Yes. Um, it sounds um, cool. Uh, you not know that it's really eh, a local. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which is why in when I'm out of Uganda, it's both all my names actually. Santa is uh, is very Latin, and uh, Anzo is very Latin. But Anzo is actually, uh, and then yeah, it's very Latin. And then um, uh, Arapapa is as well so when you get to the usa and you are within you are mixing with the, uh, uh, with the hispanic community these are very common words so i am not unique there and and yeah and and so but it's really in my local dialect and uh yeah so arapapa comes before or oh, arapapa comes before uh uh, before Uganda International Fashion Week because Arapapa is what um, is my bread and butter and it is also what butters the bread and actually provides the bread for Uganda International Fashion Week. Now, Arapapa is where I practice my craft and get paid but Uganda International Fashion Week is where I move into a larger sphere of duplicating myself for the good of others is where I create opportunities for myself but also mostly for up and coming for the country at large it is where I do what the corporate world would call the social corporate responsibility this is where my responsibility to my country Uganda comes into play this is where I tap into a sphere that is not embraced and spoken about a lot in this country, but a sphere of giving selflessly from the bounty of which life has given. And Uganda International Fashion Week for me had to be because it is a sign of continuity of the sector. So tomorrow, if Santa is normal, and say for instance, uh, God forbid, it won't happen, but you know, just for, just for talk, should there be no Arapapa, there should be an industry that takes this country forward. I am very passionate about my industry, fashion and clothing, because I've been blessed to see the light it at the end of the tunnel. I've been blessed to see the end. Even though all may look grim right now and gloomy, I know what the end is going to be. This is a sector that is globally known to employ 
at least in sub-Saharan Africa, fashion and clothing is the biggest employer. We are only second to agriculture, which is food. And so we all didn't come here naked. We don't get out of even our beds naked, for heaven's sake. There is an article of clothing somewhere. There is an article of fashion. And so I know that this sector is able to employ all our unemployed youth, women and girls especially, and as well as the boy child and the man. This is a sector that is so dynamic and is so exciting and it's, it's, it is able to also create income at household level. But someone had to give. I had to give my bread and butter to educate to promote, to develop, and to empower this sector. And that's where Uganda International Fashion Week, that's how, you know, uh, it came about. And that is what has kept it going, regardless of the times. Wow. Yes. Wow. And well, so in yes. In, in, sorry, in regards to leadership, yeah. I, the, I had to die to self, if you know what I mean, yes. as a black man yeah. and a black person. Yeah. I had to die to self to ensure that this sector continues. Because if, I, if it was going to be about me and my egos and, you know, the, 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 the labels and who I am, there was going to be no sector. I had to die to self. I had to let go of my, of, of my needs at an individual level and put the needs of my sector ahead of me. Wow. Yeah. Santa, that's a quite a very fascinating part of leadership to actually hear it coming from you. I want you to take us through to the leadership of the finding of a rapper by itself. The start of it. A rapper. Of a rapper. <laughs> I need to get this right. A rapper. There is no, no English in yes, yes. it. It is very... <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to baptize it. But I want to just... Um, you know, as you sip your coffee, just want to just think, take us through the leadership process. How did you start Arapapa? How did you even, what was going on in your mind when it all started? Because somebody out there may not know the real story behind it and what really happens. And how were you able to lead yourself throughout these years to where you are? It's not an easy journey, I'm sure. Um, Arapapa? Oh, Arapapa. Yes. See, now you, you, you very cool Ugandans have yes, uh, uh, flipped my tongue. Think, yes. <laughs> yes, so Arapapa is a vision that I am carrying. Uh, and uh, a path that I was called into. But I cannot sit here and brag that it began and started with just Santa Anzo. Like everything else I have spoken about earlier, like everything else I do, Arapapa started in, with a very spiritual journey. It was a dream. I needed to model. I needed to dress the way I desired to as a, as a young girl. There was no opportunity. Like most things I have earned, I had to create it I had to create the opportunity for myself. Now, at that time, I, I feel that I may recycle based on the history I already gave earlier, but, Just go. Uh, you know, um, we started as a modeling agency also because of the need. Mm -hmm. Here I was needing to model, having a burning desire to be on stage. I knew so many other girls and boys that needed to do the same. Arapapa came, Arapapa was born to, as a platform for everybody that had the interest True. to actually yeah. exercise it. And then we were lucky that, or blessed mm -hmm. that the art of modeling was bought by this corporate company as their 20 as their fifth anniversary on 27th of July in 2001. That was Kampala Casino of Bob Carbonero. Yeah. And, you know, and so actually as such on 25th of July, mm -hmm. Arapapa is 20 years. Wow. 
<laughs> Are yes. we going to cut the cake? There is so much going on yeah. at that time, but I definitely have a beautiful plan that is going to be unveiled okay. very soon for the 20 years of Arapapa. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, yeah, and so they paid us our first millions from you living on million, Rolex. Which means that the pearls yes. are the, the good figures. Yes, yeah. and in cash. And I held it in my hands. Remember, at that <laughs> time I was banking fifty thousand, yes, yes, yes. and now Mr. Yes, Daudani, yes, yes. my bank, and then yes, yes. sees me coming in with millions, millions, and he's like, "Ask that young lady to come to my office." That was the MD of my bank then. Yes. Uh, it was called uh, Capital Finance. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, um, then, with that. I had to move into clothing because now, as models, we used to showcase clothing from different people. Yes, and I want to recognize and thank uh, a beautiful lady, Sarah Kizito of uh, Lady Charlotte. She was one of my, you know, I must say she did mentor me in a very silent way. Every day I went to her boutique and Sarah Kizito never ever looked down on this desperate girl wow. that just yes i went into her boutique every day and sat there i waited for my friend but i also looked i touched clothes i fitted on some and i bought some slowly Under 10 care at a time yes, yes. 10 care at a time i yes. saved and bought i deposited wow. i deposited until i took like three pieces from lady charlotte beautiful clothing and uh, we used to do lots you know, several other fashion designers. We, 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 we did some also for Natasha, uh, for House of Kaine. That was uh, Natasha Kaine Mbabasi, yeah. Natasha Karugire now. Yeah. But yeah, we showcased some of her clothing. We did uh, uh, even for the um, uh, peacock fashions then, wow. you know, we, we Bill and Bobby uh, images, then the Watinga Tinga. You know, we, we, we did a lot, but then there came a time when we were only, there was this need for me, you see, I'm also from a background of very patriotic and nationalistic parents, yes. uh, you know, who participated in teaching the national anthem when we got our independence. Yes. So you are not complete unless, to my parents, you're not complete unless you're doing something for this country. And then these clothes were all uh, mostly imported. Yeah. Uh, except the ones, of course, for House of Kindness, they were made here. Yeah. Uh, but there then was a hunger for me to showcase something that spoke a very Ugandan story, made in Uganda. And that is how Papa came into play, because now I had to look for fabrics that were made in Uganda. And then we had the hand-woven Kikoi, beautiful, beautiful fabric. It's painful to note that that factory shut down. We had the organic hand, you know, it was organic cotton, raw cotton. Wow. It broke my heart to see those factories, you know, close down. But those fabrics plus my designs that I created opened the door for Arapapa because when I wore them, mm -hmm. then the corporates ordered for them. Then my friends ordered for them. And then we moved from modeling, uh, showcasing imported clothing, mm -hmm. to showcasing made in Uganda. The pride I felt, the pride <laughs> we felt. Suddenly, yes, Uganda yeah. had an identity, yeah. and CNN was calling. BBC was taking me around Kampala in Owino Market. St. Bali Kudembe yeah, now, yes, but yes, Owino yes. is always Owino will always remain the identity of the place. That's yes, where yes, I got yes, my yes. finest designer yes, clothing yes, yes. before I started designing. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, the story is a bit intertwined, but I hope that somehow I'm answering yes, you did. Your, your, your questions. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm. That right there is the epitome of self-leadership. Leadership has to be definitive as we learned from uh, Mr. Tony Otoa of the Stanbeck Business Incubator. A beautiful mind, yes, I yes. must say. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he said something very interesting, which I am um, glad to hear it from you right now. Santa, of course, all of that shows that leadership is about 
starting the course. John Maxwell often says that um, anyone can steer the ship, but it will always take the leader to chart the course. Obviously, on this journey, we can see that you were able to chart the course, and uh, many people in that uh, space were able to find meaningful jobs or, you know, paychecks that would define where they would want to be in life. Now, I want to just ask you a question, Santa. You have been a runway model before. <laughs> there are a lot of stories, sad stories, <laughs> quite very interesting stories we hear about, you know, runway stories. How were you able to outgrow these things? Some of the stories that we hear from the girls are quite very painful all across the world. But here you are, the CEO, the MD, the founder, and going. How were you able to navigate the turbulent path? What problems? If I may the problems ask. of, um, we hear that there's a lot of manipulation of girls in the process of being a runway model. Uh, two, many of them were sexually abused or harassed or used and, and they never achieved their goals. And we've had these stories over and over. But here you are with a very beautiful story. How were you able to outgrow this and even lead your colleagues to where you are today? There has to be a story there. So girls, yes. girls, know thyself and know the power that you wield. Yeah. And parents, teach your children their value, their value which is infinite, which is immense. I think that if you have no purpose, if you were my little girl at, by three years, she knew her value. There was nobody that was going to shout at her. Even if you were a parent, she'll tell you, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Now, if you are not, again, self-aware, if you have no value, if you, don't, if you don't esteem yourself before others do, then you can easily be led astray. I came into this sector with very strong grounding. Even though at that time my parents had retired, so they chose to actually leave Kampala and go back to Moyo because they felt they needed to give back to their credo. And I was left alone with my siblings. And it was a very difficult time, I will tell you. Uh, there was luck. My dad, my mom said to daddy, Santa is still young. I, had, I was still doing my senior six. Mm. And she said, Santa is still young. Get her to Moyo. They had already gone. Put her on the bus. I want her in Moyo. I told Daddy, I'm not coming. No, Mommy, Mommy has, oh, Mommy is, is today you meet her, she's so sweet, <laughs> so loving, you don't want to leave her. Yes. But the Mommy, when I was growing up, was a disciplinarian. There was very little other stuff. It was discipline, academics, and character. Full stop. And so I told daddy, mm -mm, I'm not going to Moyo. I will lose myself. I have enough of that already. So he says, okay, here is pocket money. But even though when daddy gave me pocket money, it was not enough. And so I had to make ends meet. Now, you're going to do two things. You're either going to find a job, however dirty it looked, you see these nails and hands that I take very good care of. My mom got to a point where she would hit them because I would tell her, I can't touch that, it's so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> she would pull me, Whoa. get the Omoja slippers and, you know, these hands get things clean. So then I would wash the sink, scrub the bathroom, do everything dirty to get clean. So she was passing on something to me that Santa, However dirty a job or a situation may be, it takes your mind and your hands to transform them into something prestigious that you like to be associated with. So I found a job to fund the rest of my needs as a waitress. I wasn't broke. But when I lost my waitressing job, when I quit it, yeah. life became harder because remember, I had an opportunity to get married. Yeah. I met some very you know, g good 
you know, European Gentleman. men, yeah. yes, that offered me, I, I've, 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 I've been offered an engagement ring three times, so I could have married them. But I, I, I had a purpose that had been prayed over me and that had been sold to me. I had a dream to chase. So even those situations could not quench the thirst I had, getting married, having a beautiful home, going to Europe every summer or whatever. It was beautiful. And I think I tried a bit of it, but I had a goal. It didn't work for you. It didn't work for me. I had a goal because I was taught to be self-reliant. Yes. And to also live my dream as it is. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is I was, ab I was able to survive that because I could, number one, not get into any situation that I didn't want or that did not meet my expectations. I walked away. I will, even today, Eddie, I will go here, go into a meeting, and if it doesn't meet my purpose, I walk away because I have upset, a set standard for myself. And so it's very painful what happened to lots of beautiful girls yeah. in this city during my time and even after and even now there are very promising lives that have been ruined yeah. i have had stories of agencies selling their girls off as escorts i have had those uh it never happened to me Maybe because they did not know how to package and present it to me. You see, because Maybe even because you are very tough and then you present a very <laughs> resentment sort of like uh, you know, position. Yes, they say no. You know, people also know this is a no-go area and this uh, you can play around with this. But from your story, from what you've said so far, I mean, over to you. I guess it was hard to present to make those opportunities known to me. But the guys that were bold enough to approach Santa also, you know, went through a set you know, if 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 you did stuff that I didn't think were within my comfort, yeah. I would or or would lead me to my goal, I nicely exited myself from that situation. And so I don't blame the girls, but again, Eddie, most of who we are yeah. now as a mature woman, I realize that you can take a child to a beautiful school, yeah. but you see some of those values, most of the values that, or most of the, most of our traits are constructed based on what we got at home. Yeah. Which is why I started by saying parents, mothers, do your part. Because the voice of my mother yeah. remained in these ears and in this mind, even while I was on the catwalk. Even <laughs> when I was having a, a wine, a yeah, glass yeah, of yeah, wine yeah, somewhere, yeah. I would hear voice. Then you yes. know what the action will be like. It will always be discipline, yeah. character, academics. And so if it wasn't that, I had to pack up and go home. Yeah, so everything is, the Bible says that train a child. Train a child. And so if you're, uh, for instance, a Gucci pair of shoes, a Louis Vuitton handbag? No. I was born on the slopes of Kololo. There is, I, I wore Gucci at 1920, immediately after school. I earned these things. So it was going to be, it's very difficult. You won't find me with a different swag when I have my Maasai sandals Maasai, you know, the Maasai sandals, yes. you won't find me with a different swag when I'm wearing my Maasai sandals as 
and when I'm wearing Gucci or Louis Vuitton, I will be the same. <laughs> I will. I will be the yeah. same. Yeah. Whether I'm riding a no, a Mercedes Benz, or a, a Land Rover, yeah. I will be the same. Yeah. So, I my my self worth is way beyond anything that can be compromised. Wow. Yes. Well, I, I, I warned you, and I think that uh, we have gotten that part of it already from Santa. And thank you very much, everybody who has really nominated Santa. Now I understand where the votes were quite higher to bring Santa <laughs> Zoe onto the CEO bench. I think there's a part of you that people were missing, <laughs> wanted to know, have never heard before, <laughs> don't know how to get it. I don't think the traditional newspapers will bring it out very easily. But this is your bench. We're going to take a break. And when we come back uh, on the third part of this show, we'll be talking about change management and transformation as we wind up the show. But I think that if there's a lesson you can pick from Santa right there is stay focused, parents and children. And uh, there's nothing impossible if you are focused where you want to go. The CEO bench will be right back after this break. My name is Dr. Jinpo Olowo. Uh, thank you for watching House of Talent television. I love to inspire people. I love to talk about my experiences and how uh, God has been able to use me in the different exposures. And through the leadership, through change management and transformation, I've been able to do a couple of things in my life. Now, are you a kind of person who is tired of your status quo? Do you want your situation to change? Are you tired of what is going on in your life? You know, change is a fact of life. We've all been through experiences in the last couple of months that have taken us to a place where we need to do something about our lives. We need to change whatever is going on. So if you have not piled up investment for yourself, you need to do that. If you've not done businesses to hold your family in future, you need to do that. Are you thinking of full-time employment? You need to be thinking about your life after employment or your business in the next couple of years. So if you want us to chat, if you want us to talk about this, please get in touch with us uh, at SIL Uganda on number 07, uh, 0772443085 or check our website www.siluganda.com or on all the social media handles. You can hook me up or Facebook, that is Jinpo Olowo, on uh, Instagram, Jinpo Olowo, and uh, on uh, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Then we can chat a way forward with you. We can help you, we can coach you, we can uh, walk with you this journey of financial freedom. Thank you.
a leader, do you know what leadership is? Do you understand change management or even transformation? What are you doing to change your life? A lot of people don't know what to do and how to do it and, you know, how to go about the situation they find themselves in. And quite often, so many people are confused. But on the CEO bench, we strive to give you opportunity to be able to learn from those who are doing it well, those who have done it before, those who are doing it, those who are on the rise to the top, and those already on the top, and as well as those who are on the top coming down. On this show, we brought you the former executive director of KCCA, Andrew Chitaka. You've had a beautiful story coming from him. And we brought you a business uh, philanthropist and, of course, a business mind trainer. Dr. Jean Paul Olowo was here on the show, as well as, uh, you know, Tony Otoa. We brought you more faces. But this particular show today brought you the person with the heaviest vote, the fourth female on the show, Santa Anzo. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. It's a pleasure. And Sant Eddie, just yes. before you ask me, I yes. just want to thank you uh, for using your huge platform to educate, to inspire and motivate thank you, you know, others. Thank you, and Santa. also for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Santa. Thank you. In fact, we didn't give you the opportunity. <laughs> we have no power to give you the opportunity. Those who you serve, who have interacted with your brand, who have interacted with you as an individual, are the very same people who said, we want to see Santa and Zoe, and they voted you overwhelmingly. And so we said, our job is to provide opportunity and the platform for you to be here. And in so doing, we are happy that you are here and you are able to answer some of these questions. So we want to say thank you everybody out there who voted Santa and Zoe, uh, to come on the show. And I would like to say thank you to my sister from another mother who is uh, the assistant professor for design communication in Washington University, Professor Penny Nachayo. Uh, one of the people who follow what you do. Oh. Uh, yes. Daniel Engole, Thank all you. the way in the U.S., so reverent, if you remember him. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, Chigola Mwendo, all the way in Germany. Edwin is uh, a resident uh, panelist of coffee at Endiro. We drink oh, coffee wow. together, yes, so from the coffee place. Thank you. So there are quite a number of people. And um, my wife, who is at home, uh, who follows uh, you quite a bit. So there are a number of people who voted for you. Unfortunately, we cannot pronounce and or rather list all their names out, but we want to say thank you very much for them. Thank and you. Santa, welcome back to the program. We want to dive straight into the question of change management. Santa, change management is a very systematic approach all through your life and your journey as an MD of uh, Arapapa. I hope I've gotten this time right. Arapapa. Arapapa. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, 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 it's very key. It's about, it's tagged and pegged on change management. You are managing change from every angle of your movement to where True. you are. And we've learned quite a bit in that journey. But I want to take you straight to change management, which is a systematic approach to dealing with transition. The transformation of things, you're transiting from one end to the next end. You've told us the story of how you started as a group. How did you become alone in the group? Are you still with the rest <laughs> of the group together? <laughs> you know, and of course, that's a transformation. That's a change. That's a transition of there, of course. And in an organization, we will call it the transformation of an organization's goal processes, as well as the, you know the technologies that they use to manage the process. The purposes of change is normally to implement the strategies, and of course, to affect the image and controlling the change within the environment. Two things often happen when we're doing change management. Number one, we prepare the change. Number two, we craft the vision and the plan for the change, which you have stated quite clearly. And then three, we implement the change. What was the journey like in change management? There are millions of people out there, billions of people even, who don't know how to leave one spot of comfort to the next. You are on the runway. You come from an affluent background. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have come from the upper echelon of university. From the way you speak and express yourself, it's quite clear that your parents were able to take you through. And you present a different mindset of people, not 
traditionally how girls are always looked at. But this one is a much more straightforward person, uh, you know, level edit person. How were you able to pull yourself through this? If you would share that journey with so many people who may not get the opportunity, but also the girls who don't know how to move from point A to point B, those you started with are now seeing you and saying, ha, ah, look at Santa. I wish I had stayed the path, or may I wish I've learned something from Santa. The interaction with the international community, let's dive it from there. Change management? Wow, you just took me through very, you know, I, I have had to relieve my years as a rapapa right from the start. Yes. And, uh, but first let me correct you. Uh, I was born, yes, with enough. Uh, that is uh, in the mid uh, rule of Idi Amin. Yes. But uh, my family lost all of that. And so we had to leave this plush environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am a former refugee because then dad was arrested. You know how it was. Mm -hmm. You were uh, educated those days. That was yeah. enough yeah. reason to throw you behind the bars. And uh, my dad was arrested, brought to Kampala. Mommy and the rest of us were banished to the village. And uh, the politics of revenge took over. The then uh, government of Idi Amin was overthrown. And uh, the Obote government came in. And uh, there was need to revenge and teach the West Nilers, who, by the way, were not part of the <laughs> mess that had been created. Yeah. We were kicked out of our homes. Our homes were burnt to the ground. This girl bo born in, you know, a, 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 a Mulago Hospital then yes. was a five-star experience. And, and my mom had me there, and she said, Santa, wow because she had had some in Moyo. Yeah. But by the time Santa was born, the family was in Kampala. Yeah. But all of these luxuries that Santa was known for, Santa was a girl of, you know, I had milk till I was five years. I was, I was just very um, demanding as a child. Yeah. And, and my father made sure, my, my mom said, no, she has to be like everybody else. You know, you, we don't have it, we don't, so yes, yes. sort yourself. <laughs> and Daddy Are you the last born? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm yeah. in the you middle. You have the last born tendencies. No, yeah. I'm in the middle because yeah. in the middle yeah. you don't make yourself hard. Yeah, or you never, or you never. <laughs> 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 yes. And, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in the, the first born was doing everything right. The last born does everything right. Yeah. Now there's this one in, in the, the middle. middle. Completely, is, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So when mommy would say, mm, I'm not dealing with this. She has children of her own. She has extended family to look after. And then there's and then there's daddy. She said, I'm not dealing with this one. But daddy always came back home, yeah. fed me, made sure I had my milk, you know. But this poor girl ends up in... In, as a refugee in southern Sudan, wow. where even <coughs> basic running water from the tops, from the taps in Kampala, are not available. So I, I didn't have it easy growing up. Yes, I was born in it, but we lost it all. And all of our siblings, parents, my mom, daddy was arrested, which means it was as grim yeah. and beaten to near death. Yeah. But uh, I was a refugee in southern Sudan. So I come back from southern Sudan as a malnutrited, impoverished little girl back to Kampala. And so the journey begins again. And so I just wanted to correct that. Wow. No, I didn't have an affluent background. But yes. You were born in it. So yeah, but, yes, but losing it along the way is part of the change management. Yes. Which I'm lacking <laughs> right now. And everybody watching the show, that's the part we're looking for. How do you manage that change? The mm. turnaround situation in your life to okay. the refugee camp and now to Santa who is interacting with the world. I also, again, I'll go back to my parents and thank them because for mommy, she was also in this comfort. Mm -hmm. And now she's a single mother in southern Sudan with all these children. By then, I think we were six. So 
you know, my mom had to forget that she was a teacher by profession, that she was this wife that had everything that she needed. She now had to dig other people's gardens. So I saw the transformation mommy went through. So my mom, just like me or my parents, yeah. my dad, when he rode in the, you know, UG, Mercedes Slick, Black Mercedes Benzes, behaved the same way when later he had to take a band, I mean, a, a, bus. a bus, a public bus with chickens, fish, whatever, from Moyo to Kampala, he would still be the same father I knew, with the same dignity. And so I watched my parents lose it all, gain it all, lose it all over, but never stop to give and share whatever they, were, they, they had. So just to paint a, a, a clear picture, yeah. that even when we came back to Kampala, it was struggle again mm. to get up. And then we were right, we went through school, but then again, let me correct you, I am yet to get a university <laughs> degree. <laughs> I, I, so yes, before yes. my parents, yes. I, I still owe them. Do you remember? Yes. Character, yes. Um, uh, discipline, academics. academics. Yes. Yeah, I still have to, you know, I, and I owe it to them, but also now to myself. Yeah to get my, 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 my papers in order. Yeah. Although luckily for me, I, I called a, a university. I called two universities, one in Europe, another in the US, and I said, I am enrolling. I want to do this at a, a degree level. And they, say, they, they learned through my profile and said, what? Say, you have achieved everything with this. Exactly, that's students. my point. So why would you be looking for it now? Um, I, I, am, I am, I've been offered a mastery PhD. So because of my 20 years experience and the things that I've gone through, and so now I may have to f to to <laughs> forego the much yes talks about she, yes she yeah. talked about and and demanded bachelorette. Yeah. And when I finally go back to school, I am going to be rated at at the level of mastery that I have yeah. earned in this sector. And yes, so. I don't want nobody to get discouraged that because they do not have a, a, a degree yeah. or you know the highest standard of learning or schooling, even with seven, even with a P7 certificate, one can still make it. I went yes up to senior six. I did uh, I did train as a fashion designer, have a diploma there, but for me to be everything that I am, there's a wealth of expertise and excellence that is not taught in school. It's taught at home. It's, you get educated, very academic in school, but then life experiences, the experiences we go through day to day, give us the wealth of knowledge and wisdom that we need to actually make it in life. So don't think that because you don't have a degree or, you know, that you not no. A degree is actually nothing if you do not have uh, the, the, the required value systems of, uh, of uh, successful um, enterprise. Wow. Um, wow. That already, let's just take a moment to just, you know, just take in that one, Santa. I think that on the change management, on a scale of 1 to 10, to me, you've already scored 9, if not 10. Because a lot it. of people don't come out very clearly to talk about this. Because they fear that there will be stigmatization happening or will come to them. But to see where you are now and what you're talking about now, those two are completely a mismatch. I don't even think you should be thinking of it now anyway. Well, <laughs> nobody, let me tell you this, nobody can yes. stigmatize yes, me yes. or look down on me because yes, of yes. a lack of a degree. Yes, yes. Because before they can do that, they yes. have to beat me at my game. Yes. Across the board, I not know. just design, <laughs> across the board. Yes. And so I am very confident yes. in my abilities yes. and also in the lack of my abilities. I know what I'm lacking and yes. I know what to do to get it. Yes. So we have to be very careful not to let nobody ta talk us down. The Christ we follow as a Christian that yes. I follow, yes. did I don't see a master's or a degree anywhere. Yes. And yet for us to get to wherever we want to go, he is the path. Yes. 
be it business, be it politics, yeah. be, be it, you know, uh, academia or relig a religious calling, you've got to go through Christ to get there if you're Christian. Wow. And so we are way beyond material attachments. Yeah. So I can't be graded in that area. And by the way, I mark university students. I do mark university students. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I don't think that uh, you need anybody to give you a battle for you to be approved because I think you're way, way beyond the grade itself. But, but, also, yeah. but also, I must add that this should not be taken to think that, oh, I can make it, I don't have to go to school. Yes, yes. I preach to parents that bring their children because as it is now, you find that the, ne the person that wants to be the next Papa is in primary yeah. I've, uh, with uh, General Katumba Wamala. Yes. I was privileged to be invited with him to mentor students of uh, um, uh, uh, Aga Khan. And I'll tell you, I was shocked that kids as young as seven and they want to be the next Papa. Twelve, they're already and achieving it. And I'm telling them yes. that, you know, I'm telling parents that bring them to me, no doubt when I'm ready. However, I want them to go through all the grades yeah. of education, yeah. all the levels of education to the highest, if they have the opportunity. I didn't get my, my bachelor's degree at the time because I chose against my parents' will to not go to Macquarie University. Daddy would have paid to the last coin of his pension to ensure that Santa gets a degree, but I said, that it's a West. I want. This is what I, I want. want fashion. I w yeah. So, I'm I'm very happy. I just want to hear listen. when you told your father, "This is what I want to do, Daddy. I want to go into fashion." What was his words? I know your mom. You are two different paths when you talked about that fashion. <laughs> you have, from what I hear, being an academia and being a teacher, I'm, I'm sure that that was not something that she wanted to hear. But I just want to hear, when you told your daddy or your father that you, this is not what I want to do, what did he say? My dad is a man of very few words. You're just about to help a child who doesn't, who is struggling with the same thing, with the father or with the mother. The skill sets are completely designed to this. The gift in God has given are completely this. But the parent is saying, this is where you're going. Yeah. I once, uh, Santa, even before you answer that, I talked to a 12-year-old girl, and she said, my mom is everything to me. She's good. She always taught us to be who we want to be and everything, and she always tells me that I can do whatever I want to do. But then sometimes I get confused when she tells me that I have to be a doctor. So the young girl told me, so I don't know whether she wants me to do what she wants or she wants me to do what she's taught me to be, which is to be what I want to be. So I'm confused. So it's on that background that I actually ask this question to help that girl, that boy, that child out there who wants to be something else but doesn't know how to communicate with the parents and the, how the response from the parents, borrowing from you, will help them to change and to make the right footing to the next step. Again, it starts on your knees. Talk to God about your desires. I want to, at this point, thank so much one of my godfathers, or actually my godfather, Dr. James Magara, for and and everything good I that I am. May it be. May he get the blessings. And for any mistake I've made, please <laughs> exclude him because yes. That has been on my own account. Yeah. If I was to follow the path, yeah. I would be a much better person. But yeah. let me simply say that um, he told me to talk to God. Just tell God what it is you want. Mm -hmm. And if it is within his purposes for you, you will be it. Yeah. So to that young girl and young boy, talk to God. Humble up. And don't fear, don't get also religious and, you know, first go or clean up, what? Just get in a corner. Like Christ says, close yourself in a closet. Mm -hmm. You know, pull yourself away from the crowd. And that crowd can be your lovely mama. Yeah. It could be your daddy. Yeah. But 
or it, your best friend, pull away from them. Mm -hmm. Go into the closet. Tell God what it is you want in your heart. I did that amidst my chaotic life of a teenager. I did that. And I can tell you that daddy in heaven, God listened. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, mm -hmm. I was making this decision. God had nicely moved up my mom, moved out my mom out of the equa equation in Kampala, yes. took her back to the <laughs> village where she was so thrilled yeah. to take up more children, yes. younger than Santa, and yeah. groom them, to grow her orchard, you know, to... Forgotten to about Santa. She did forget about yes. me. Her forgot ears were on the yes, ground. Yes. But oh, what is, what is she doing? But I thank God yeah, yeah. that my mom was not in Kampala because I'm telling you, that I think <laughs> she went on national TV on NTV to yeah. apologize yes. and to advise parents. Yeah. I think about a few years ago, yeah. she was called and she had to go and apologize and say, I am sorry. But if mom had been in Kampala, I'm telling you, she would have beaten me. She had, would have beaten this out of me. Wow. You had to be di and disciplined for her. Don't forget she also had a bit of her upbringing in the convent. Yes. She's very organized and very, <laughs> even now when you go home, you yes. find her in a very ironed, beautiful top and dress, well mm. tucked in. She's very orderly and lives by the norm. Now, that happened. Mommy was taken out of the occasion, equa equation, yeah. even daddy. But when I told daddy what I wanted to do, he also wasn't here. But his reaction was, Okay, <laughs> but he was like, yes. Santa is impossible to Being die. Be successful. To, yeah. to die, to die, to divert. divert. Yes. Once her mind is set on to something, yes. but I believe when he went quiet, he was talking to God as well, like, help my little girl. And so I then had to get a job with the little pocket money he had left me. I had, to, it ran out, I had to find a job. And then I had to find my way in fashion college, yeah. which by the way, even then was not even available in Kampala. Yeah. Uh, but there was Dolphin Fashion College, so I was led there. But let me simply say that uh, you've got to be, I keep, I've said it so many times, but you've got to be a positive big head. Yeah. The parents, mommy was doing that not because she didn't want me to pursue my goals, but she did it to protect me. She, mm. to protect me, she wants the best. Every parent wants the best for their child. Mm. Um, but you, the child, it's the onus is on you to prove to your parent that you're actually going to give, to put your very best foot forward and try, as you may fail, to be a success story, mm. whatever success would mean money, you know, achievements. For me, it wasn't money, because also that wasn't told to me as a child. I'm just learning now mm. that it is money is a good thing, mm. and I should love money. But it's not everything. But, oh no, money is very important. Now, that <laughs> would be another topic. But I've, I'm having yes, to yes. unlearn yeah. the, the very Catholic background I came from, yeah. uh, to unlearn the teachings about wealth and money. Okay. Let me tell you, money is very important and every child should know without money, certain things can't happen. Yeah. Dreams are gagged and stagnated, so money is very important. Wow. So I won't sit here and, and talk that talk of money is not. I've learned a lot at the age, at this level of maturity. Yeah. I can assure you that every African parent must buy their little child that book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Let's start there. Mm. Let's learn to talk wealth. Let us learn to talk money yeah. in a very positive way. Okay. And hope that answers the question. Yeah. But let me simply let me quickly touch on to something you asked earlier when you started this uh, line of questions. You asked where the group I started with, with. are yeah. and or if they moved together yes. with me. Yes, and how did you manage that change? Eddie, I've been in the wilderness so many times, and no, that group is not with me today. 
Some of them are my friends. Some of them we parted ways, not in a bad way, but you know, career paths, interests, and all changed. But let me simply say that um, in the workings of Uganda International Fashion Week, Arapapa and Santanzo as a person, um, no. Uh, there will probably be one or two people that we are still in touch with as friends and all, but as business, no. And uh, I don't blame them, we were very young, mm -hmm. and each one followed the path that yeah. they were meant to follow, and I stayed the, the, course. the course on mine. But that wasn't the first and last time I found myself in a wilderness with only water. I've been through that maybe five times. My business is making 20 years. Let me tell you, every five years have come with their own set of trials and tribulations to the extent that sometimes the only thing I'll be left with would be the brand Arapapa and the brand Uganda International Fashion Week and the brand, thank God, that is held in very high esteem in this country and beyond Santa Anzo. Sometimes I've lost it all, over and over again. But again, I'm very grateful to God that at every stage of Arapapa, mm -hmm. he's brought me the perfect people mm -hmm. for me to steer the ship with. And I remain very humbled and very grateful for that. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Well, the CEO bench is really having a great moment. I would like to say thank you, God, for the lockdown. I think if we had not gone into a lockdown, we would not have come back with this kind of interview <laughs> and this kind of stories. Santa, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled with the story of change management, uh, you know, from that group. But just quickly, just before we wind up the interview, as you take a sip of your coffee, I just want to say, how were you able to communicate the change? At what point did you realize that guys as a group this is where I want to go. The vision has shifted. This is where I want to go. And mm -hmm. how was it taken in? Because most times when we are communicating change management, managing the process of change management is not something that is easy. It leads us to either a fight. It leads us to have enmity. It leads us to, you know, envy when a person becomes successful. It's not an easy step. And even those who are leaving their jobs don't know how to manage the process. Tony Otoa was here and says, don't burn the bridges, don't burn the place where you're going, don't uproot the sweet potatoes with everything and leave and go because all the pumpkin, you will have to come back. And he recounted and said, for every job I have left in the process of managing change, I have come back and now I'm a consultant in them, which means that he was doing something good. But not everybody finds it easy. And I'm sure there's somebody, of course, out there watching this program right now who is also going to struggle with that or is struggling with that already. How do you, your story, how do you help them to overcome by just learning from that small bit of communicating how, guys, this is it, I'm moving here and everybody starts to move. Okay. Um, I also find myself, unlike Tony Otoa, yeah. is that his name? Yes. Is that the guy of Stanbic? Tony Okao Otoa, Otoa, yes. Tony Okao Otoa. Otoa, 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 yes. That's the guy of Stanbic yes. Business? Yes, Stanbic Business Incubator Limited. Oh boy, I have He's a the lot new of CEO. admiration. Yeah. I have a lot of admiration. <laughs> yes. And, and I just want to And I'm sure he's him. watching the show, or he's going to touch it at some point. I just yeah. want to thank him. I yeah. had him on radio. Yeah. I, I'm yet to watch this show yeah. you yes. did with him. But I just want to thank him that yeah. the powerful voice yeah. that I had on radio, yeah. you know, just reverberated all over. And, and I know that uh, uh, we have some great minds, yeah. beautiful minds in this country, yeah. uh, such as his. Um, my sector is very different from his. My sector. This is, is the fashion sector. Fashion and clothing, Cream, yeah. and also modeling. Yeah. Our sector is n is very unique, in that it's very informal. We are not mostly white collar. There are very few white collars in this sector, at least in Uganda, yeah. and also in several parts of the developing world. Yeah. 
uh, this sector has very white collar people mm -hmm. in places such as Europe, uh, in, in the USA, and Australia, and probably Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, it pains me, but it also, it pains me because then it's harder to have a shared uh, comprehensive vision yeah. uh, when you've been schooled differently yeah. we have as I said before different parents mm -hmm. different value systems people are taught to other you'll find a parent who teach their child always grow up your colleagues mm -hmm. and friends mm -hmm. you find a parent who say no 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 tear them down you should be the best um, a combination of so many factors make it very hard for things to happen normally yeah. in a sector such as ours. Uh, it's very, it's a vocation. Hand, um. skill driven yeah. as well. And that comes with a set of uh, challenges. We are incredible individuals in the in the sector of fashion and clothing. We are very brilliant in talent. We are very progressive in talent. We are gifted in talent. We are passionate to the point that we don't care who supports us, who doesn't. The government may, the government may not, mm -hmm. but we are artists. We are creatives. We're going to break through. But for us as individuals mm -hmm. that alone can get us to succeed but if we are going to be a sector a formidable sector a sector to reckon with it doesn't take one individual it takes everybody yeah. putting their best foot forward and to do that mm -hmm. the school I went to as a primary in primary Bad Valley our motto is knowledge is power and indeed knowledge is power yeah. academics education enlightenment opens out our minds mm -hmm. to not be afraid of the next talented person yeah. but to actually learn to cooperate as competitors mm -hmm. which where I embrace the term competition, you actually opt to compete together in a progressive flourishing environment. Yeah. It is very difficult to do that unless it begins with a mindset wow. change. And so for me, when I'm mentoring, I tell my mentees that all oh, their parents that I'm not, when you come to me as a fashion designer, I'm not in the business of selling clothes per se. I'm in a business of mindset change. change. Because for as long as our minds are impoverished, thinking me and me and me alone, there is no growth. You want to pull another down? You, you are very sure going to keep down. And so I've learned, if someone needs to move on, I've learned to nicely allow them to exit. I may have a contract with you, and I have a contract with so many people. Yeah. Even the models I, pre I, I pre represented, yeah. when they chose to go to the next greener pasture, or what they perceived as greener, and I had a contract with them, I would tell their managers, let them go. Because you see, I don't, want to have a hold on to anyone's. I do not want, I'm not in this to fail anyone. I'm in this to be a channel yeah. for good. And so if the time has come for you to exit from me, I don't want a contract to keep you with me. I want you to go yeah. and I bless you. And so my, the people that I started with, we can still call each other if there's need. But like I say, some have become food, have joined the food business. Some are married and 
growing young families. Some are, you know, some are all over, some are now employed. Santa is self-employed or, you know, uh, uh, is a business. Except if you find that the conversations are different. Yeah, but we are able to pick up the phone call and encourage each other and, you know, but, but then, you know, uh, I think that for me, the most important thing is to ensure that I am not a roadblock to anyone, but I also make sure that nobody's a roadblock to me. I've got to be selfish in two ways. Selfish in that if you're selfish enough to protect yourself, I should also be selfish enough to protect myself, and I encourage that on both sides. Uh, but I also realize that we are meant to probably be in relationships yeah. for different reasons at different times. Yeah. And so when that time is over, I let God and I let, I let go, actually, and I let God. And so, you know, it's then a beautiful progress on all um, accounts, okay. theirs and mine. Uh, but yes, when I started Fashion Week, the biggest threat to me, there were two big threats, but I'll focus on Fashion Week because that's what you asked. Yeah. Fashion Week in 2008 was when I faced the biggest, biggest challenge. My staff, my team came to me and they said, Santa, we've done a survey and we are unhappy. Mm. This Fashion Week, is a corporate social responsibility. See, even when our tickets sell out, mm -hmm. we don't make money as a rapapa. So it's not a business venture. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> really a, you know, yeah. I'm also a social entrepreneur at yeah. heart. I've yeah. learned yeah. through my decisions and, and beings that I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm not a hard-nosed capitalist. I'm going after the kill. Yes. No, 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 no. I'm a social entrepreneur, meaning mm -hmm. that I am, um, I grow, I've grown myself and I'm growing myself. But my father always told me, my parents actually, never forget your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Meaning never forget the person next to you. Yeah. Never forget your teammate if you're in a football. Move with them. So that is who I am. And so I, I, there's no loss for me. Whether my bank account is that high or this high, I will be, I will operate at the same level. Yeah. But because of that, sometimes I get into problems. Mm. Now, this time I got into problems with my employees. My team of Fashion Week, remember 2008 was the, we started Fashion Week in 2003, so that's the fifth, right? That's the fifth, yeah. Yes, yes. It was the biggest challenge. Yeah. And they say to me, Santa, we will tell you, point blank. If you do Uganda International Fashion Week again, we are leaving you. You are on your own. And they gave me the reasons. They say this is a very ungrateful people, a very ungrateful sector. Said Santa, we don't make money for us at Fashion Week. We actually promote our competition. We <laughs> create and promote our competition. Yes, yes, do you yes. realize that? Yes, yes. Because Uganda International Fashion yes. Week is a platform to develop, promote, everyone. and for yes. everyone. Yes. Such things are done by the government. One of our event managers <laughs> at that time, he looked at me yes, and said, Santa, are you the government? Mm. So I, now my staff, these talks had infiltrated my staff. Say, so Sam said, she's a spy. What is she doing? Mm -hmm. Did you know the... So, <laughs> are you, is she looking for political office? And unknown to everybody, yeah. my dad came with a message from his constituency. Remember, he was a very successful politician. Yeah, yes. So they said, you support people who can't even express themselves. Why don't you bring us Santa? Mm -hmm. And he said, Santa, that people have asked for him, for you. And I said, no. And he said, Santa said, no, I didn't press. Because when, when she says no, 
she is Maybe firm. Not, yeah. I don't want that route. Yeah. I believe that I can still make it be a change maker without being a politician. Yeah. And so they say, nobody says thank you to us. We have launched almost all the fashion brands in this country. People don't come back to say thank you. Instead, we're being pulled down. And we are not earning. We, this is a corporate social responsibility. <laughs> and so they said, yeah. if you were giving Arapapa the same focus that you give Uganda International Fashion Week, we would be so reliant. We wouldn't be renting. We would be having a huge building of our own in the middle of this city. Yeah. Santa Arapapa is big. Quit Fashion Week. So they told me, you have all the time to make up your mind. Mm -hmm. Should you make your time to launch edition Five, yeah. which is 28, yeah. 2008. Yes. Bye. I launched it. <laughs> Not to hurt them, but because yes, yes. this is me. Yeah. I couldn't go to bed without Fashion Week. Yeah. I needed it. It was the fuel yeah. driving me. So I launched it. And I lost the most beautiful team that I ever had of Uganda International Fashion Week from 2003 to 2008. You know yourselves. Yes. I won't say them on air, but after here, I think I'm going to call them and thank <laughs> them. But they actually yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. And I hold nothing against them because yeah. their call, they had given to me to yeah. the limit, yeah. to the best of their abilities. And that was it. They had to go and find more. Uh, um, uh, more financially rewarding opportunities. Yes. Because for me, I still eat this one, you know. And so I, I hey, Salavi, I don't hold nothing against them. I actually appreciate them very well. But I had to learn then to train a new team yes. in a very limited time. Wow. And host Uganda International Fashion in 2008. And I'm very proud to say that as I speak now, the lockdown, of course, last year we could not host Fashion Week. But you people, yeah. Ugandans in the diaspora, Ugandans in Kampala, rated us world class. And let me tell you something. That is my goal. Excellence. I have had people tell me, people in very high offices, very rich business people in this town tell me, no, 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 this is Uganda. Well, I don't operate. Yes. Because you know when they say this is Uganda, yeah, you're it's, supposed it's, to it's be something mediocre, that, yeah, yeah, wishy yeah. Why wishy, are you doing this? Just let's let it be. Shabby. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Uganda for me means excellence. The very best of who I am. Yes. And so when I arrive, even in <laughs> South Africa, wherever I go, Bangkok, <laughs> USA, they will say, Uganda has arrived. arrived because they know yeah. I'm going to put my best foot forward and yeah. if anybody is going to make it to New York Times, if anybody is going to get to fashion TV in Milan, New York, wherever, believe you me, it's going to be Arapapa made in Uganda. And so I'm very proud of the wilderness, the journey that I have walked alone Wow! because each time God has given me the best team to work with. Wow. Yes. Well, like they say, every good thing must come to an end. Santa, what a beautiful story of transformation that you have right there that you've shared with us. Of course, um, today, I, uh, I don't know whether I should even read some of your comments, but I want to read, Santa, a few of the questions that have come just as we wind up. And so I'll give you opportunity in a couple of minutes to respond to. Number one, uh, a story that comes from a question that came much, much earlier. Ed Yokila, thank you very much for the CEO bench. We were really concerned about the CEO bench. Uh, you went quiet, silent, and nobody was saying anything, but thank you. First of all, my question to Santa and Zoe is one. Santa, where do we see you and the excellent and beautiful things you're doing in the next 10, 15 years? Arapapa is a global made in Uganda outfit. And that is where it's going to be in the next 10, 15 years. We are a global entity. Uh, precisely. Wow. And I have the next question. <laughs> what a, a very interesting answer right there. I have the next question here. Um, Eddie, thank you very much for the show. Um, I've always loved and worn Santa. 
Now, in Uganda, you don't, when you're on the runway or you go for event, you never hear Uganda saying, I'm wearing Santa Zo, I'm wearing so and so, I'm wearing uh, Chaligonza. Can you ask Santa, she talked about mindset change. How is she planning on changing on the mindset of Ugandans to start being proud of who they were? Wow. Um, first of all, before we start pushing it down the throat of Ugandans, oh, be proud of Uganda, where are Uganda? Uganda? Uganda has to be, to set a standard. For us as Arapapa, we set a standard. When Uganda had not accepted us, you know, in 2001 when we launched out, we did not launch saying, proclaim us and wear us, no, we excelled in our art. And what happened was, Uganda was left no choice because here was a brand that CNN was featuring. Here was a brand that got South Africa Broadcasting Corporation, SABC 1, SABC 2, and SABC 3 all into the country to cover this beautiful butterfly story made in Uganda. I was personally in Dubai, sitting in the you know, public lobby, no, actually it was in the duty-free area. Mm. You know, just be, be probably taking a coffee and something. And I saw seven white men, all suited and carrying my Arapapa paper bag. And actually a Ugandan woman I did not know that was Ugandan ran to it. A hajat. said, Santa, look, look, look. <laughs> Silly me. Yes. I couldn't even find yes. my yes. camera. Yes. I couldn't yes. do nothing. Yes. I was in awe, oh, and they were late for their flight. They left, but be, they walked through, and everybody was like, who are these guys, and who is our papa? And so before we can demand for Ugandans to wear us, we have to walk the talk. We have to be excellent enough. Ugandans like fine things in life. Yeah. We may be an LDC country, we may be a developing country, yeah. but we like the finer things in life. A Ugandan is going to wear, you're wearing polo right now. Yeah. Believe you me, if I had a beautiful Arapapa shirt, Arapapa, you'd wear it. I, I'm, I'm really looking for it, Santa. I've been Let's asking see. people to Well, I should it. have come now, with now, one. No one has been able to. They said I'm very complicated because uh, 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I changed my dressing. So everything I wear is best spoke. And I've been telling yes. you Ugandans, we can do this here. May I we please? <laughs> Gladly. I'll take that as a yes, yes. Yes, yes, So I am looking forward to somebody who can actually dress us on the, you know, on the CEO bench and on the, you know, creative industry talk that we have every Tuesday. Santa, thank you so much yeah. for giving us this moment to come onto the show. And uh, my last question to you, Santa, what would you leave with a person who is watching this show and what would you say to those who nominated you and overwhelmingly voted you to come back, to come to the CEO bench for the first time? Our time is first spent, but I want you to just leave a message with them. And what would you say to every Ugandan who is watching the show right now? Far, wide, near, and close. Okay. Um, so first of all, I think I'll say that. And I want you to look into the <laughs> camera there. <laughs> So for those of you that actually nominated and voted for me, I am deeply honored. I'm actually deeply humbled at the same time. So thank you from the depth of my heart. And you know, my word to all Ugandans, everywhere I pass today, we are pulling each other down. We are unhappy with the government. We are, yeah, so many things have gone wrong, probably are wrong. And I won't deny you that opportunity to vent. But for me, I believe in the saying, which is also in the Bible. Yeah. Complaints bring about more things to complain about. When you're grateful, gratitude also brings about more opportunities mm. to be grateful for. And I'm not saying everything is good. I'm simply saying, for me as Santa, I pick out those things that make me happy. What is the best thing that has happened to Uganda right now? Find it and say thank you. And believe you me, with a grateful heart, the next beautiful venture will unfold. I know times are hard. I have faced it in my sector. We are the hardest hit 
sector with COVID-19. And even the government has not listed us among those that are to be supported. For the of the Whatever it is. Yes. You know, we, are my, are my tellers haven't yeah. received it. We have not been listed as a sector. But remember, this is the biggest employer in sub-Saharan Africa. We are not in the government plan. But I will still say that as Eddie O'Killer gave me a script to enlighten and share about transformation, you yourself should be a force for positive transformation of first yourself and your country. God bless you. Wow, Fanta, thank you so much for accepting to come on the show today. And thank you for those very beautiful words that you've given us, words of wisdom. The program exists to inspire, encourage, and transform. And we'd like to say thank you because this morning you have inspired, or this afternoon, this night, depending on which part of the world they are, you've inspired, you have encouraged, and you have transformed their lives. Thank For that, we want to say thank you, and we want to say, until the next time, the CEO <laughs> bench would want to say thank you. Vote if you think that Santa Azul should come back for the second part of this interview. Waiting for your vote, and of course, there's that part we didn't finish with Santa about uh, the other part she talked about. We can't start there, the money <laughs> and the understanding of money. But the CEO bench has come to a close today. Until next week, stay grounded and stay safe. This is the CEO bench. Edio Killer, Santa Azul signing out please visit arapapa arapapa and buy yourself a piece of a beautifully made outfit from uganda Thank if you. i don't see you on the streets of kampala with arapapa you're not going to look like those three white men with a small bag <laughs> seven <up>. <laughs> seven <laughs> of them until next week god bless you and stay focused